Proverbs 3 verses 1 to 35, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments, too, for length of days, and long life and peace shall they add to thee. 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart, for so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. 8. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. 10. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. 12. For whom the Lord loveth he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. 14. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Sixteen length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Seventeen her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Eighteen she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. Nineteen the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. Twenty by his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. Twenty one, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes, keep sound wisdom and discretion. Twenty two, so shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace to thy neck. Twenty three, then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. Twenty four, when thou leest down, thou shalt not be afraid, yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. 26. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. 28. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go, and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. 29. Devise not evil against thy neighbor seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Thirty strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. Thirty one envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Thirty two for the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. Thirty three the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Thirty four surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. 35. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Opening Sentence Proverbs 3 verses 1 to 2 My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments, too, for length of days, and long life and peace shall they add to thee. My son is again being addressed and reminded to keep God's law. The reward for doing so is a long and peaceful life. Keep mercy and truth. Proverbs 3 verses 3 to 4 Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart, for so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. God's law demanded mercy and truth. This requirement was taught in the Old Testament book of Micah, and Jesus taught this doctrine in his earthly ministry to Israel. Micah 6 verse 8 He has shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Matthew 23 23 Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone with all thine heart.
Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 7, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. This is the first step that the son must take in order to walk on the right pathway. Instead of trusting in his own wisdom, he should acknowledge the Lord and trust in his wisdom. The reward for doing so is physical and spiritual health. Finding the Theme The Benefits of Finding Wisdom God promised Israel length of days in Proverbs 3 verse 2 and in the Law of Moses, Exodus 20 verse 12. Throughout Proverbs, God promised health to the body and bountiful harvests if Israel would keep his law. Proverbs 3 colon 9-10 Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the firstfruits of all thine increase. 10 So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Barns filled with plenty. In the law, God commanded Israel to bring him the firstfruits of their land. Exodus 23 verses 14 to 19. In turn, God promised Israel abundant physical blessings. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14. God also gave Israel a timeline that warned of a coming judgment for failure to keep his law. This timeline included the coming of the Messiah. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 26. When the Messiah, Jesus Christ, came to Israel the first time, he added new instructions to the existing law. These included teaching his disciples to forsake all their physical possessions and follow him. Matthew 19 verse 27 Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all, and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Luke 14.33 So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. During the time of Jesus' earthly ministry to Israel, a certain rich Israelite, possessing barns filled with plenty, did not obey Jesus' teaching of the dispensation that was presently at hand. He refused to forsake all. His failure to understand the time in which he lived marked him as a fool, and death was his reward. Luke 12 verses 13 to 21. Chastisement. Proverbs 3 verses 11 to 12 My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. 12 For whom the Lord loveth he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Proverbs now introduces the topic of chastisement, which confirms the conditional nature of the covenant of law between God and Israel. As long as Israel obeyed God, he would bless them, but if Israel disobeyed, God would chastise them with physical punishment. This would come as no surprise to Israel because God plainly stated in his law exactly how he would punish them for their disobedience. Leviticus 26. Find Wisdom. Proverbs 3 verses 13 to 18. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. 14. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. 16. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. 17. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is every one that retaineth her. Once again wisdom is personified as a woman to be sought like a wife. She is more to be desired than silver, gold, and rubies. Being valued above rubies connects her with the virtuous of Proverbs chapter 31. The way of wisdom leads to eternal life, as does the tree of life in Genesis 3 verse 22, to which she is also compared. Creation Proverbs 3 verses 19 to 20 The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. 20 By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. The Lord possessed wisdom, with which he founded the heaven and earth. See chapter 8 for an expanded discussion of the wisdom of God before the world was created. Wisdom is grace to thy neck. 
Proverbs 3 verses 21 to 22, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. 22, so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. In Proverbs 1 verse 9, the son was told that the instruction of thy father and the law of thy mother are chains about thy neck. In verse 3 of this chapter, the son is told to bind them about thy neck. And Proverbs 6 verse 21 tells the son to tie them about thy neck. Chains in scripture wealth and authority. Genesis 41 verse 42. Daniel 5 verse 29. And chains symbolize the ornaments of a beloved wife. Song of Solomon 1 verse 10. For verse 9. Ezekiel 16 verse 11. When considering the overview of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, how the book begins with the tree of life and ends with the city of New Jerusalem coming down as a bride from heaven, and considering the book of Proverbs, which begins with wisdom personified as a woman and ends with the virtuous woman, a bigger picture should begin to emerge. By comparing scripture with scripture, the connection between wisdom and a wife becomes clear. Chapter 5 includes an expanded discussion of this topic for further study. Meanwhile, consider these verses. Proverbs 3 verse 4 So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Proverbs 3.13 Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Proverbs 18.22 Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Walk safely and with confidence. Proverbs 3 verses 23 to 26 Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. 24 When thou leest down, thou shalt not be afraid, yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. 25 Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. 26 For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. When the son trusts in the Lord and chooses the right pathway, he reaps the benefits of walking safely and not stumbling. He will have nothing to fear, his sleep will be peaceful, and he will not be trapped by wicked devices. Thy neighbor. Proverbs 3 verses 27 to 30 Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. 28 Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. 29. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. 30. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. The law of Moses had much to say on the topic of how to treat thy neighbor, and Jesus reminded his disciples of this great commandment. Mark 12 verses 29 to 31 And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, thirty, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. Thirty-one and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, the good that the king has by him which is due to his neighbor, is the wisdom of the word of God, Deuteronomy 30 verse 14. The oppressor. Proverbs 3 verse 31 Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. By comparing scriptures, the oppressor is understood to be a wicked ruler. The son envied the oppressor because of his authority and wealth. God had already promised his son authority and wealth, so he had no cause for envy. Envy is a terrible sin that would lead the son to choose the wrong pathway. God's Secret Proverbs 3 verse 32 For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The froward is a common topic in the book of Proverbs. To be froward is to be unyielding to God's law. The use of the word secret is notable in this passage. God does have secrets, some he shares with men while others he keeps hidden in himself until he chooses to reveal them at a later time. Deuteronomy 29, 29 The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Conclusion
Proverbs 3 verses 33 to 35 The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. 34 Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. 35 The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. This chapter ends with the son receiving blessing or cursing, grace or scorn, glory or shame, depending upon the path he chose to walk and in which house he chose to dwell. Summary Two pathways are laid out before the son, a pathway of do and be blessed, or do not and be cursed, Deuteronomy 28. The son was required to remember God's law, keep his commandments, hold to mercy and truth, trust in the Lord, acknowledge the Lord, fear the Lord, depart from evil, honor the Lord with the firstfruits of the land, love his neighbor, and envy not the oppressor. If the son kept all these things he was called a wise son who would inherit glory. If he failed to keep these things, he was called a fool and would be cursed, scorned and shamed. Dispensational Consideration Although Israel was commanded to offer God the firstfruits brought forth in the land, and the disciples of Jesus Christ were commanded to forsake all and follow him, the body of Christ was never given any such commands. Believers today are expected to work so that they may eat and give to those who are in need. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 12 They are not commanded to sell their possessions and forsake all. If a believer in this present dispensation will not work and provide for his own family, he is considered worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 As Jesus is no longer on the earth, it is impossible to follow him as Israel was instructed to do during his earthly ministry. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16 Instead, the Apostle Paul instructs us to follow him. See 1 Corinthians 4 verse 16 11 verse 1 Philippians 3 verse 17 All the promises that God made to Israel must be considered dispensationally. While God did indeed make conditional promises to bless the nation of Israel, those who are saved today under the dispensation of grace never received any such promises. In fact, members in the body of Christ are told to expect physical suffering in this present world. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 A believer looks for spiritual, not physical, blessings that are reserved in literal heavenly places. Ephesians 1 verse 3 it is important to note that Jesus Christ took upon himself the physical punishment that sinners deserve when he hung upon the cross. God will not correct the body of Christ with physical punishment in this dispensation. However, he does reprove and correct the body of Christ with his word. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 17. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Life Application Although this chapter pertains to the nation of Israel, the general principles taught may be applied throughout all dispensations without violating doctrine. The following are examples of general principles that should be applied today. Keep mercy and truth, trust in the Lord, love thy neighbor, and do not envy the wicked. Keep in mind that believers today do not find favor with God because of what they do, but because of what Christ has already done. Believers do not keep the law of tithing to be blessed. Instead, they give cheerfully because they have already been blessed. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 Believers cannot be scorned or cursed for failing to keep the law because Jesus was made a curse, and he gave believers his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 the best way to love thy neighbor today is to tell them what Jesus Christ did for them on the cross and invite them to trust in it. Proverbs 4 verse 7 Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting get understanding. In the next chapter, God continues to implore his son to get wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3 Homework Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Leviticus chapter 26 both describe the conditional promises which God made to the nation of Israel.
Timeline Read and study the timeline given for they people Israel in Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. Understand that after Messiah, Jesus Christ was cut off. The nation of Israel was in expectation of the abomination of desolation and the seven years of tribulation one week determined upon their people. Note, the reason that the seven-year tribulation did not come as prophesied was due to the failure of Israel to accept Jesus as their Messiah and King. Instead of punishing them, God saved the Apostle Paul with a new revelation by which everyone, Jew or Gentile, who puts their faith in the crosswork of Christ, can be saved. When the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, God will return to his dealings with the nation of Israel and fulfill all of his promises to them. Not one word of God will fail. It will happen exactly as it was spoken and written. Read Leviticus 26 not only describes the prophesied punishment upon Israel for breaking the law, but more importantly it instructs them on how to behave during the time of their chastisement. These particular verses in Leviticus 26 are broken into sections, each beginning with if and ending with I will. And if you will not hearken unto me. Verses 14, 18, 21, 27, I will, and if you will not be reformed by these things. Verse 23, I will. Compare and contrast. The book of Proverbs was written during King Solomon's glorious reign when Israel was enjoying the blessings of God. In contrast, the four Gospels were written during the time of Israel's visitation immediately prior to their impending prophesied tribulation. In one dispensation, it was a blessing to have barns filled with plenty. In another dispensation, it was foolish and rebellious to have barns filled with plenty. God expects believers to understand the times in which they live. Luke 12 verse 56 The Bride of the Lamb The Bride of the Lamb is New Jerusalem, the City of God. Revelation 21, 2 and 1 John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Concordance Search Look for the words sleep and safe in Bible Gateway to find other verses that support Proverbs 3 verse 25. See Psalms 4 verse 8, Ezekiel 34 colon 25 and Concordance Search. The word oppressor is found 21 times in the KDB. Study the context of its use to get a biblical definition and then compare your findings to the definition given by the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Do the same for the word froward. Which books of the Bible contain the most references to the words? Oppressor and froward. Note, the effort to enumerate particular books of the Bible, which contain the most references to particular words or phrases, will help us focus on which books to read and study in order to get an overview and a fuller understanding of those topics. Concordance Search The word secret is found over 90 times in the KDB. Here are three cross-references to read and study, Deuteronomy 29 verse 29, Romans 16 verse 25, and 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7. Question, have you heard of the secret called the dispensation of the grace of God? See Ephesians 3 verses 2 to 4 and search Blue Letter Bible for the phrase the mystery. Notice that the Apostle Paul writes more about the mystery than any other writer. Make a list in your notes of the unique mysteries found in the New Testament. Cross-reference. Compare the following verses to understand that the body of Christ is to expect suffering in this life and that God receives glory. When we rest in the grace that he has given us in his Son, Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 6 and 12 colon 9, Philippians 1 verse 29 and 2 Timothy 3 verse 12.